thank you very much for coming. So thank you for having um, me. And thank you, Francois, for accepting this exercise to be on stage. I invited both of you before you made your deal. Uh, it was, I think, in May that you accepted uh, both of you to come. And I was in holidays this summer when I saw the news. I called you to say congrats. It's a good thing when you are an entrepreneur. But more seriously, just after saying congrats, I had many, of many questions. Um, so I have for you, but I will just ask the first one in the continuity of our first discussion to Francois. How did you add this idea um, of, uh, to, to buy Fedor, which is, sorry to say, very German. Uh, the first new, and you are not so very German, uh, yeah. <laughs> which is um, very online, and I know you are very digital, but you are very, uh, a big distribution bank, very yeah. retail, not so international until now. Uh, um, and that this was the first new bank, and also, sorry to say, but since this last year, we had many buzz around does Neobank have a business model? I mean, they give everything and so on. So how, how did you have this idea? Well, we, we had heard uh, about Fido from various sources, actually. So we, um, we heard about Fido from um, a very large US IT company, for instance. Uh, OK, OK. Uh, we, we heard about Fido from um, um, uh, the, the FinTech world. And we were interested in, in uh, the fact that Fido was a community bank. Uh, and that was a very different model from ours, but a community bank. And we are cooperative banks, okay, in the retail business. We are cooperative banks. So we are, in a way, as well community banks. So that was something that was of some kind of interest for us. And we knew a little bit about Fido because um, it was very innovative, very disruptive. And it was both a bank and a tech platform. So we, we, we got in touch. Uh, I think I must say through um, an investment banker. So it happens that investment bankers are useful. I, I think <laughs> we have them tonight on stage. Which is, okay, <laughs> uh, which is good. Um, and uh, well, we, we, you, you met with the team. Uh, we met, we, um, we spent some time in Munich. Uh, which is in Germany, but you know, it is the south of Germany. Um, and well, the fit was 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 good, um, and um, uh, we we made our due deal, everything, and and that's it. So basically, we were interested uh, in the tech platform. We were interested in the very disruptive model Fedor has, and the fit was good. So. Uh, we thought we could partner with Fido, which is what we did. We just closed the deal actually uh, one or two weeks ago. So uh, that's why uh, you we, smile. Uh, yeah, that was the closing was uh, <laughs> there were a lot of shareholders. So okay, never mind. But now the deal is closed, uh, and uh, uh, we are now. But, and why is directly this a decision to buy totally instead of perhaps just a participation or? Well. Uh, the capital structure was such that uh, if we were, if we wanted to be able to accelerate Fedor development, um, it, it was really easier uh, to be the majority shareholder. So as we are not so many discussions with uh, with others about uh, price of rights issues and blah blah blah. So um, basically, I think given the uh, the structure of the capital, once again. It was better for us to be a um, majority shareholder, and Matthias uh, has the same feeling. Matthias stays a shareholder of the company, uh, so uh, we we're, and we're very glad to partner with him. Thank you, Francois. Uh, Matthias, I, um, we, we should end it now. It can't be any better now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Um, Matthias, you are a real entrepreneur. You, I, I knew you for uh, some years, and uh, it's not easy to decide to sell and to let no. your baby go. Um, so, same question then to Francois. Why no? Why did you give uh, the mission to a banker to find you someone to buy? And why at the end did you decide to go with BPC? I assume it's not only a question of a check. I assume it's also a question of strategy. So, what was in your mind of entrepreneur to go that way? So, uh, as Francois said, I, I uh, had the chance to remain as a shareholder, which is, uh, of course, very important for me. So I'm still in a, in a very entrepreneurial role, uh, which I'm in particular happy for. Um, so it's not really that I would let my baby go, um, and Francois will not let me go. So <laughs> um, we will stay together. 
um, on the one side. On the other side, you know, once we, once we, uh, once you set up a company, and in particular, once you set up a bank, uh, you have to understand that this is a very capital intense uh, job actually you're doing. So you are constantly looking and seeking additional tier one equity because once you want to ramp up your business, you need equity, as easy as that. Um, that was not an easy task over the last years, uh, and actually that took away a lot of our workforce, and, and this is also why, as Francois indicated it, we had a very fragmented shareholder structure in the meantime, so a capital replacement was the real strategy to go on the one side. On the other side, we wanted to be in a whatever kind of safe harbor for the future. Um, why do I think uh, this is necessary? Because for a small bank, regulation is really getting very tough. Uh, and the volatile world we are living in, in particular in Europe now, coming with a lot of influences to Europe, uh, from Brexit to low interest rate environment to a whatever kind of future in the US and so on, uh, a small bank with a tiny equity base actually needs to have a strong partner. That's as easy as that. So we've been absolutely clear, once we want to make our bank to survive in future, we need to have a stable capital base, first of all. Second, so who can provide this stable capital base? On the one side, you have finance investors or venture caps or whatsoever. And on the other side, of course, you have uh, strategic partners like a bank. Well, I could, I could use the full day to give stories about the conversations we had in our fundraising round. Yeah, you um, can do that on your booth. <laughs> you can go and see. But, but let me just share one story, which is explaining why I'm happy to partner with a bank. I had once a venture capitalist coming up to me and saying, okay, he, he had three meetings with us and so on, and everything was fine and fantastic and awesome, as we say it at the ballet. Um, so, um, and this guy, at the end of the third meeting, third meeting, he was talking to a bank. At the end of the third meeting, he said, listen, Matthias, you have so many customer deposits. Why are you looking for equity? <laughs> See, the ones you are laughing are bankers, the other ones are not. <laughs> so, if you explain your neighbor what the joke was, that would be very helpful. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, in, in this moment well, we of have the some fintech who forgot that, you know <laughs> that recently. We and have some exactly fintech those guys who forgot these two pocket stuff. You this know? Is, and those guys are heating up the bubble in the fintech now because they're investing like silly, you know, and we have to check out whether they really understand the business model, if there is one. Um, so, this moment was shocking. And I can tell you out of my lot of non-bank conversations, because with our no-stack banking, we are, of course, offering services for, for you maybe heard of uh, O2 Telefonica banking, which we are operating, uh, and we are happy that Orange is copying that now. Hello, Orange. Um, <laughs> so um, it is not easy to explain the method of banking to somebody who is not a banker, actually. I have to find out. I'm not a banker myself, but I had to learn it as well. Um, so, but it's easier to, once we have a strategic discussion about equity, about balance sheets and everything else, on, on a banking level you can discuss that way easier. Yeah? And you have the mutual understanding. So once you want to have a sustainable future, I think this is in particular helpful. So now why BPCU? Uh, we've been, of course, first of all, w w when we got approached by banks and, and BPCU was not the only one, uh, we are first of all very skeptical and react in a, in a uh, Bavarian sense of being kind of arrogant, um, which is not meant like that. It's more or less an expression of our insecurity. Um, but <laughs> this was before or after the Oktoberfest? <laughs> it was after the October. No, it's, uh, well, it's, it's always before or after the Oktoberfest, <laughs> you know. Um, no, but BPCU we found out to be extremely important uh, and, and suitable because, uh, as Francois mentioned, the, the mutual understanding of community was very important to us. Uh, why? Because we have a lot of bankers who simply do not understand the usage of such a community. They think it's a danger, they think it's useless, whatsoever for us it's a great tool of customer embracing and customer engagement. So that's very important, first of all. Second, BPCU being en France is something that is not creating any kind of conflict with our German nature, which means normally once we've, we've been talks in with a German bank, first conversation you have is, are you in charge for Germany? Is this a European uh, silo you're reporting in? You have whatever kind of redundancies, um, uh, cannibalization discussion and all that, what you do not need to talk about actually. And, and, um, and the way Francois and the team approached us actually gave us the strong feeling that we are welcome, you know, and that we can 
deliver some whatever kind of good spirit to the group, and, and this was great. So this is why we ended up like this. Sorry, I'm curious. I have a second question on the same subject. When you did the pitch to your banker, be careful he's on that stage tonight. Um, did you tell him to sell what you are as a neo bank in B2C, or more to put in front what you are doing very well also as API and a B2B2C provider? I, Which I one is the best today, uh, working and future? Well, the technology, actually in the, in the, in the um, sequence of origination, first we had the bank, and to, to set up the bank, we created the technology. And now the technology is something which receives a global demand. You know, we are currently, uh, our, one of our really first big customers is sitting in Abu Dhabi, and we are currently creating with our feeder operating system Mideast based Sharia compliant community banking. Can you imagine? That's, that's a challenge. Um, so, and this will go around the globe by the way. Uh, so I think the infrastructure is something that is very, very important, and it's for sure something, that's the core DNA to this, and everything what we do and think we need to code. Everything that is not coded is not of any value to us. So this is kind of a golden rule at Feeder. Once you have a process, you need to code it, not code it, not valuable, forget it. So that's the rule, end to end. Um, so I think at the end of the day, we are more or less a tech company having a banking license. So the bank is the own application of our technology and is the showcase how we can run our technology for other banks or non-banks uh, that approach us and want to offer digital banking. So <laughs> it's both, actually. So that leads me to the last question for both of you, and I will begin by you and let Francois conclude. Um, which, what is your vision of this wedding uh, in 10 years? Let, let's let's do a bit of prospection. Let's okay. Perhaps you will be uh, uh, you know in an island. Did you divorce? Yeah. No, never. <laughs> you it will never be on an opened. island. I don't I'm know. Pretty but stable on that. But I'm not speaking. <laughs> I'm not speaking of your wedding or whatever. I'm speaking of company. Okay, just the companies. What do you think? Fido plus BPC equals three. I hope not two. In in ten years from now, a bit but of prospection. The, the, he's mean asking me first. You know, so that <laughs> is really mean. <laughs> so um, I let you conclude like that. Being, being, let me say it like this, let me say it like this. Being a co-shareholder, of course, a tiny, tiny little uh, co-shareholder of, <laughs> of, of Feeder. Actually, I would envisage now being a member of, of BPCU Group, which is uh, one of the top 10 banks in Europe. Um, I would play it very strongly, and I would say I would play also very aggressively and would say let us preempt the European market on, on in particular, retail and SME business. As, what a surprise I'm saying that. And, and, and let us play, let us play a, a strong digital role in the moment where other banks may be having a huge cost factor and are in a very complicated transition into digital, have a moment of weakness and vulnerability. So I think we can play it very aggressively. Let's play first. That's the main, only that answer? You have two minutes more if you want. Okay. On the okay. strategy. No, well, I'm, not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure if Francois would like to. <laughs> no, but you can also give some subliminal messages right no, now. So you know, no, no, I, I think we have a pretty, pretty clear strategy all in all. Now, we, we are working on the details. But as said, I think your feeder bank uh, should play a, a, a very important role in European uh, direct banking, all in all. So uh, we are rolling out into additional countries this year. This is what we have been waiting for during the transition in the transaction period. Um, now we can play that. Um, as I said, we should uh, be one of the major players, maybe by five years. I would never think it in 10 years because this is a very fast moving environment. Um, our technology company actually is, is uh, as I said, globally active. So we will have offices. We, in, we will open office in Singapore shortly. We, will, we have an office already in New York. We have an office in Berlin, as you spoke about it. Uh, we will be representing the group there as well. So this will not only be uh, FIDO, it will be with, uh, together with Eve. Uh, we are working to have uh, kind of FinLab points there so that we really reach out in the global FinTech environment. Um, so I think with the strong support of BPCU and the, the little FIDO brand, uh, we can play it to be an aggressive group in the global digital banking community. Same question for Francois. Perhaps 10 years is too long, five will be good. 10 years <laughs> is uh, eternity, yes. Um, so I, I would say we, what we want to do is accelerate Fido's development in Europe as a bank, uh, as a mobile uh, community bank, okay? Um, with a specific question for France, uh, how do we do it 
in front because we uh, we are obviously in a specific situation here. Um, so this is the first uh, first step. Second step, we 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 are able to accelerate Fido's development in the B two B in their B two B business as well. Uh, with um, uh, our retail banking presence outside um, uh, France and, and Europe tomorrow is not such that we we okay we don't have any uh, any competition uh, issue whatsoever. We're able to use Fidor and uh, help us building bricks of our digital transformation here. Uh, Fidor has a um, uh, 60 second banking device, for instance, which is very interesting that we could use here in, uh, in France. So uh, basically, we, we, we will accelerate Fidor's development. This is what we want to do. So we will not integrate Fidor as a bank within the group. We will not paint it in purple, okay? Um, no problem. Uh, this is not what our vision. Our vision is to develop Fidor in Europe um, based upon I its model, uh, which is very, very specific, but we believe in this model, and, um, and to accelerate and use Fidor as an accelerator for our own uh, digital transformation, which is, um, uh, the story will, and we will invest capital and equity uh, in, in, in Fidor. I will use the remaining time for a last question. I, you almost already answered it in yeah. your previous speech, but I will ask both, but it's mainly for you. At the beginning, when I contacted you in May, it was to be on the new bank panel, which is this afternoon. Um, my question was the same six months ago that it will be this afternoon for the panelists is, is there a future alone? For a near bank, when, as you mentioned earlier, costs are so huge to do B2C that yeah. maybe you have a future to be alone without a banker. Do you think you did the only choice possible to develop? Or perhaps some of them can succeed alone? <coughs> I know they are your friends, but you can no, speak. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. It's, 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 believe me, this is a question you, you in, in particular, in such a process and, and in particular before and after signature, you think about it ongoingly. But on the other side, I'm, I'm, I'm a thousand percent convinced that we did the right step. Um, as I said, I, I foresee a very volatile future. Being a small bank, it is not easy, and the volatility is coming out of different sources. And regulators are translating volatility into equity. That's easy. So um, you need to have a stable capital base as a bank, full stop. It's not, and it's not a neo bank thing or not. It's it's for all banks the same thing. Um, so um, so I think so alone with VCs hard way. Well, I, I'm I'm not sure if the VCs are really judging the situation rightly and are judging uh, and can estimate the the capital intense part of the setup of this business. And I have my I have my doubts on that. So some of our friends this afternoon on this stage, yeah. they are, they have raised 50 million, 100 million, but yeah, it's but still small in this business? Yeah, first of all, that can be pretty quickly pretty small, that's right. Uh, and second, uh, I cannot judge what they use it for, so I do not know what this usage of proceeds. I, I, I can understand or I see a lot of companies burning a lot of money for, for things I maybe would not burn it for. Um, maybe right. we did our mistakes as well, so, so this is, uh, if you are a startup, you are dedicated to do mistakes. Actually, you should keep it as low as possible, anyhow. Um, so I cannot speak for the others. I, I would say, what is independence good if you cannot use it because you have no equity? So it's a theoretical currency, actually, and, and out of that, to me, the discussion is pretty easy. Thank you. Do you want to conclude on that? No, bank, yeah, it, it's fairly true that banking is a capital intensive business. Uh, we have 70 billion euros capital. So um, uh, I think this is, uh, Fidor is a bank, and to develop the bank you need capital. Um, th that is um, the story for um, uh, regulated banking. So I think as, as much as said, and we agreed very much upon this, um, uh, if you are a bank, uh, in the regulated business, you need a lot of capital. And uh, capital is, uh, okay, uh, there is a lot of liquidity in the market today, uh, a lot of capital available, but it's still rare. Um, um, it's still rare, so um, that's it. I have to thank you, we are 10 minutes late. Thank you very much. Thank you.